when you hold down the accelerator in a car, the power will build all the way through the rev range. The characteristics of how that power builds is called the power band. My name's Mick, I drive cars, and today I'm gonna teach you and show you what the power band is. I'm gonna take you first through the very basics and then we'll get out on the road, we'll get onto some nice roads, I'll do a little POV style and I'll give you an actual demonstration of what it feels like and it looks like to experience the power band of a car once we've understood what it actually is. Right then, a few examples. I have here a graph of a car's power band. This is a boring diesel car's power band. If you pay attention to the horsepower, you will see that for the majority of this car's rev range, it is pretty flat. It goes up a little bit, but it doesn't really excite. Now, diesel cars have this characteristic. They make lots of torque at the bottom of the rev range, but it's just flat from there on. So basically you get everything at the bottom and then there is no need to rev the car whatsoever. Now I have Honda VTEC. This is one of the coolest power bands uh, because you will notice at 5,500 RPM, there is a very defined uptick in the amount of power that it produces. That's because the, the cams essentially go to high lift. I'm not an engineer, I don't fully understand it, but cool things happen and great noises come out the back. So something's going right. <laughs> Third and final power band. Here we have a high performing, naturally aspirated car. In this example, you can see a linear power band. As the revs go up, the power band linearly, linearly that's a hard word to say, goes up with the revs. This means that you get a consistent increase in power all the way through the rev range. But Mick, why do we care about power bands? Yeah, great engines make different power in different way who cares right well if you're a petrol head you'll know holding down that accelerator pedal and feeling the build of the power going up the rev range is a great feeling and the different characteristics of these engines are what give engines their character let's get onto the road and i'll show you an actual demonstration and example of a car's power band my lovely McCann RS has a turbo 1.8 engine with generally quite small cylinders, but a big fucking turbo to make 300 horsepower. So it has certain characteristics of turbo engines, uh, but it's also got high lift cams. So it has something at the top end as well. Um, let's go and experience what that is like. Right then, time for a demonstration. As you go up the revs, the engine builds more power. I'm at 2,500 RPM. If I put my foot to the floor, or at 2,000 now, if I put my foot all the way to the floor, a little bit of acceleration happens. Let's try that again at about three. Now I put my foot all the way to the floor. A lot more acceleration happens. If you want the best from your car, you wanna keep it on the boil. That means in a place where it is making good power. Power band in this car is from about two and a half all the way to about six, right here. <laughs> you can even hear that the car is very happy when it's in the middle of that power band. So if I go down to second, for example, we're right towards the top of the power band. That's where this car's very happy. That's where this car really does its best work because of the power band that it has. Let's try that again. Right towards the top of the rev band. That's where it really wants to be, but actually, you can feel it drop off right towards the very top. When you get to 6,000 and beyond, it starts to lose power again. 
just because, again, it's the characteristic of a turbocharged engine. I'll just give you a demonstration too of not being in the power band. Right now I'm at like 1500, 1600 RPM. If I try to make power here, the car struggles and it labors until it reaches that 2000 to 2500 RPM point where it's now actually making power. What I'll do is I'll go down to fifth and I'll give an even more extreme example. I'm at 1500 RPM, foot flat to the floor and nothing, nothing. The turbo builds up, we're past two, we're past like two and a half and now we're making progress. Now the engine's happy. And then if we go down a couple gears and we're now at 4000 RPM, we're still doing the same speed. The, re the response is brilliant, really quick, really snappy response. What does this mean for you and how does it benefit you? Well, if you know this, then you can make really good use of your gears. Because if you're trying to make progress and enjoy your car and have a good drive, you will know that right now, fifth gear, 2000-ish RPM, is not gonna give me, it gives me a little bit, but it doesn't give me what I want. It doesn't give me <laughs> if there's one thing to take away from all of this, it's that you should explore the power band in your own car. Every car and every engine has a unique power band that is interesting and enjoyable. If you guys go back and watch my video called Slow Car Fast, I drove a 60 horsepower, one liter, non-turbo, three cylinder uh, Skoda Fabia, and that engine, had a power band. Um, every engine has a power band. It's just some make more power than others, but every engine has characteristics of how the power builds and fades and how the torque comes in and how it works. And it's all really interesting to, to play with.